In this second video in the series on subsummary reports in FileMaker Pro 12, you're going to learn how to use related data to improve the look and usefulness of the report instead of showing just these silly foreign key field values. Secondly, we're going to learn how to add a second category or break field into the report so that the interaction records get categorized or, and or subtotaled by more than one key field. In this case, it's going to be by sales rep. And thirdly, we'll look at how to create a summary only report that excludes the body part, that excludes these detail records and just shows the total, uh, the, the, just shows the sub summaries and grand summary. So let's get started getting rid of these foreign key field values and replacing them with something more meaningful, the actual name of the interaction type. We'll jump into layout mode. This KF interaction type ID field is the right field to use as our break field, but it doesn't do users any good because it's just ID numbers, one, two, three, or four for the different interaction types. Let's change that to display the actual name of the interaction type, which, as you saw in the first video, is being pulled from the interaction type table. Double clicking on the field lets you go in and change the field to something else. Let's see if we have a relationship going from the interaction table over to the interaction type table. And we don't. We've only got a relationship from interaction to the contact table, but we can create one on the fly. Manage database, relationships. Here's our interaction table occurrence that this layout is based on. Let's add a new table occurrence to it, or string a new table occurrence from it, I should say. Add table, interaction type, and then we'll give it the name following the anchor buoy method of naming things that starts with ah, that starts with the name of the anchor table that this buoy is being strung off of and that's in lowercase letters and then adds to it the name of the table that this is an actual occurrence of in all capitals We'll move it into position, resize it so we can see the whole title. And then we need to expand this interaction table occurrence here so that we can see the interaction type ID field and create the relationship. Each interaction is tagged with an interaction type ID that has matching values to the, for to the primary key field over here in the interaction type table. We'll collapse those just to keep things nice and tidy. Maybe rearrange these so that the lines don't cross. I know, I'm being a little bit perfectionistic here. Sorry about that. And there we now have our relationship from interaction to interaction type, thereby granting us access to the type field where the name of the interaction type is stored, like prospect and sales call and all that. Now some of those names are pretty long, so I'm going to widen this field out a little bit. And maybe we'll make it bold and increase the font size just a touch. We no longer need the foreign key field here, the one, twos, and threes, and fours. So I'm going to delete that and its label from up above. And in my opinion, I don't think we need to restate the interaction type down here either in the trailing subsummary. So we'll delete that and maybe just slide everything else into the left a good bit. like so. All right, let's see what that's done now. And actually, these should come over a bit too. Holding down the shift key as you drag things keeps them moving on a straight path. So we'll save and exit. Uh, and that's looking so much better already. Our prospect calls five of them. Total number count five. Sales meetings, we can see there are four of them. And likewise, it's counting in the subsummary. And we've got a lot of white space in there we could clean up by shrinking up the body part a little bit. But I think the next thing we'd want to focus on is to use related data here to display the sales rep's name rather than their ID number. We'll just use the same kind of an approach. Double click the field. Look for a relationship. Hmm, we don't have one. So let's go make one. We'll insert a new table occurrence onto the graph for sales rep. We know that each interaction record is tagged with the sales rep who 
made that interaction. And we'll see that foreign key field right here. Foreign key, KF stands for key foreign, KP stands for key primary. We'll see that foreign key field here, and we'll use it to relate over to the primary key field that uniquely identifies each sales rep. And now we have that relationship that allows us to reach across and get the sales rep's name instead of just their ID number and display it here. We'll change this label appropriately. I'm also going to slide these fields up a little bit toward the top of their body part and shrink the body part up as high as it will go as well. That'll eliminate all that white space that we were seeing. Ah, much better. Once again, your boss looks over your shoulder and says, oh, this is fantastic, but I would also like to keep track of the number of minutes that we're devoting to these interactions, both per incident and subtotals and grand totals. So I've just added in a duration field that shows the number of minutes of each interaction. And at the bottom of each grouping, in the trailing subsummaries, we'd like to sum up those minutes values. Well, we're going to need to use another summary field. So let's go and manage database in the fields tab. And we'll create a field that's going to sum this duration number field here. I'll call it sum of duration. And for the data type, we use summary. Click create. And it opens up a dialog box that we saw in the first video in this series. But in the first go around, we were seeing this through the context of the layout assistant or the layout wizard. Now we're just defining the field ourselves manually. Here are the different summary field types of calculations. We want to total up or sum up, would be another way to say this, the values in that duration field. We're not trying to create a running total like you would have in a checkbook register where you saw the new total after each entry. We just want the bottom line totals at the base of each grouping and at the bottom of the entire report. We'll say OK. And we've got our sum of duration field. OK again. Go into layout mode. And let's place a copy of that new summary field right here under duration. I'm just going to option drag. If you're on a PC, you could hold down the control key instead of the option key. On a Mac, it's option to make a copy of something. Sum of duration. And we'll move that into place. And then again, option drag to do a drag copy. Same field. And let's extend this line, this decorative line out to the right as well. And line those up using the inspector, aligning them on their left edges. That looks good. Save, exit. And now we're seeing a new subtotal appearing at the bottom of each group, our sum of minutes, and at the very bottom of their whole report. And there's that line that we extended out. We get the total sum of all the minutes for all the records in the found set. Now your boss also wanted this report to group and subtotal the interactions by sales rep. So now we're going to add a second category, a second break field to this report, sales rep ID. The sales rep will be more of the super category, whereas our interaction types, the sales meetings and follow-up calls and such, will be more of a subcategory. To do that, we go to layout mode. We've already got our Subsummary when sorted by KF interaction type ID, leading and trailing. But we're going to need to add more subsummary parts for sales rep. A leading so that we can see the name of the sales rep. We'll pull that sales rep field out of the body part because it doesn't need to be there redundantly. And we'll also need a trailing subsummary part down below so that we can count and or sum the interactions by sales rep. 
There are several different ways to work with parts, but my favorite is Part Setup here under the Layouts menu. You see the existing parts, and you can create more. Subsummary when sorted by KF Sales Rep ID. Okay, and it'll ask if we want this to be a leading subsummary or a trailing subsummary. Well, we need both, so we'll start with the one above. And it adds it into the list here, and it also added it over here. But remember, we wanted the sales rep to be more of the super category and interaction type to be more of the subcategory. So you can simply drag using the double headed arrow here to change the order of the parts. Now let's go and create the trailing subsummary when sorted by sales rep ID. Print below to make it trailing. And this one happens to fall where we wanted it to. And we'll say done. Now, let's bring that rep field up and out of the body part, and put it up here. Maybe we'll nudge type over a little bit. And we'll improve the look of sales rep by making it bold and bigger as well. Get rid of the label, we won't need that anymore. And then likewise, we can slide these other things over a bit as, as well. One of the nice things about using subsummary parts is that it typically allows you to consolidate your data and show fewer repetitions of the same data. Then, let's take a copy of these three things, the decorative line and those two summary fields, and place them in that trailing subsummary part. There, I think I've got those accurately placed. Another thing you can do is you can change the background color of a part. By clicking the part label here, you can come over into the Appearance tab on the inspector and give it a different fill color. Maybe we'll just go with kind of a light gray. Something like that. All right, let's see how this looks. And we're disappointed because we don't get our sales rep subsummary parts. Well, it's because the data isn't yet sorted by the sales rep. Remember, if your, say, if your data isn't sorted properly, then your subsummary parts don't show up right. So let's go in and sort. Adding that sales rep ID field into the sort order making it the first field in the sort order because, again, we wanted our sales rep ID to be the main category, the super category, and interaction to be the subcategory, which means we need to sort the data in that order. Sales rep first, then interaction. Sort. And there we are. Look at that. Beautiful. Our sales rep subsummary part leading shows up here. We get all of Oscar's prospect calls, two of them for a total of 27 minutes in duration, all of his sales meetings, follow-up calls, follow-up meetings. Then the sub-summary trailing for the sales rep down here saying Oscar had seven interactions for a total of seven, uh, 373 minutes of time. And likewise, all the way down for the other sales reps, there's Robert's interactions and Julia's and the grand total for all three sales reps at the bottom. Now remember, there's a script associated with this layout such that on layout enter, that script runs. So we need to go and modify the script too so that it has the new sort order. Interaction detail is the name of the script that FileMaker created for us. We'll edit this sort records script step, bringing in the KF sales rep ID field just like we did when I was manually sorting a moment ago, but this time we're building it into the script. Close and save. Now watch this. I'll unsort the data on purpose. The subsummaries disappear, but then we'll switch into a different layout and then switch back, which will cause that script to trigger and the data shapes up beautifully.